Well, welcome, Salem, to the Monday message. Uh, I'm your mayor, Chuck Bennett. Uh, let's get your week started with a reminder that several city departments opened some offices last week now that we're in phase two. One example is the Salem Police Department has reopened the prescription drug disposal box. It's right on the first floor and available for you to stop by at your convenience. Be sure to check the web page shown on the screen for any additional details. Well, today I'm really pleased to have with me Gretchen Bennett, the City of Salem Homeless Liaison Staffer, and we're going to talk more about this critical issue of homelessness in our community. Well, Gretchen, welcome to Monday morning and our talk uh, with the community. Uh, what's the state of homelessness in the Salem community? Oh, certainly. We estimate about 1,118 persons. Are, wow. Yeah. Yeah, sit with that one for a minute. Yeah. Are experiencing houselessness. And folks are in our parks, our streets, in our shelters, in vehicles of different kinds around the city. So this isn't couch surfers or somebody who's in uh, the folks' basement or living in the garage. These are people literally You're without, right. without a house. You understand that, Mayor. If, if a person's bunking up with a friend or family member, for example, they're not included in that estimate. Yeah, I think people need to understand that, that this is a really large number that really confronts our community. Yeah. Uh, what are we doing? What well, yeah, absolutely. I, I point out that there's about 300 or so steady shelter beds. It increases during the warming season, but that gap, if you think about that for a minute, that gap is dramatic. Yeah. We, um, we pivoted during the pandemic um, quite quickly um, to be able to address issues. As you know, um, council approved an emergency resolution um, which allowed for camping in the undeveloped areas of Cascades Gateway Park and Wallace Marine Park. How's that going? Well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's been possible for people to be more physically distant. With that acreage, you can be in a tent and you can spread out. And so you can um, be in a better position to protect from COVID-19, you know, than if you're crammed up together. So it, it creates more of a space to spread out. We've been working on things like um, positively incentivizing clean campsites. Right. Yeah. Can you describe that? I, that's a great program. Oh, sure. It's nicknamed Cash for Trash, and <laughs> it, it, but it's not cash. It's a gift card. And, and when we have a clean um, camp area, that's we really wanted to make sure the camps were healthy. Right. And so kind of taking that strength-based positive approach to have some incentives so we really appreciate the everyone that's been involved in that effort. You mentioned COVID-19. What are we doing uh, in addition to getting people some space? Uh, what else are we doing for the homeless in, in the COVID-19 yeah. pandemic? Well, I've appreciated the city's emergency operations center accessibility to our nonprofit partners. They've been able to get out and answer questions and problem solve how um, the, the services can ensure physical distancing and, and help apply the Center for Disease Control guidelines. Um, also, the Mid Willamette Valley Community Action Agency stood up a hotel program in March that zeroed in, it, it was able to serve people who were COVID positive and presumptive positive, who were unsheltered and couldn't self-isolate, but it really had a large number of people who are medically fragile, who meet the yeah. CDC definition for that. And that, in my mind, was an important hospital surge prevention strategy, because if you, if you have cancer or medically immune and unable to self-isolate, you're at risk for worse health outcomes if you contract COVID. So this approach helped, I think, keep the, keep the surge down. So that, yeah. that was another program that went in. Um, what are we doing for the, into the future? This is the most common question. When are you gonna house all these people? And I, when you say the numbers, I, you know, and no one ever likes to hear this, boy, it is a huge lift to get over a thousand units in this town for homeless people, but we do have programs. What's going on? We do, and it's gonna take all of us. That lift is a community and a regional, regional need um, to meet. The, the city's working hard right now, despite the pandemic, which is kind of interesting. They're able to open Redwood Crossing 
been quite hard. That is a really neat new strategy that addresses the needs of people who have been chronically homeless, homeless and need assistance in um, gaining skills to live inside so they don't end up with an eviction back out on the street. So we're opening Redwood Crossing this summer. That'll be 32 units. And I want to thank Salem Health for investing in six respite rooms um, that will help in that. We're working to secure funding partners to be able to move on opening Yakina Hall, which is an important option that'll have 52 units. And the Salem Housing Authority is active each time they renovate a property to look for ways to expand the number of affordable units. And that's the old uh, nurses dorm over at the state hospital, right? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. so. That's really neat. But we need the community's help. We're looking for very urgently looking for more partners to the Salem Warming Network. As we start looking ahead to the fall and winter and dropping temperatures, it's clear we need more partners who can come and assist with identifying locations and volunteers so that we can have more places in the warm when we need them in the warming network. We're also looking for more vehicle camping partners to be able to have more places for vehicles to safely be. So I'm hoping people will give me a call. I hope so, too. Uh, just one final. Uh, we are looking at property the city owns out on Portland Road, the old DMV building. What's going to happen there? Because there's clearly changes going on out there. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, that is a need of, of some funding. We are looking at that location for a possible navigation center. Oh, great. Just critical that we can open that, as, as you understand, and expand the number of beds. Um, so we're evaluating what its capacity and opportunity might be able to be. We're in a research phase on that location right, right. now. So if people have any thoughts on development out there of a homeless area in that sort of triangle, they should let you know. Please, okay. please, I welcome it. Welcome the conversation. Well, thanks for the update. I know we can meet almost weekly and you'd have a new report for us. So we'll meet again soon. Thank you very much, Gretchen. Anytime, thank you. Thank you.